In this video, I'll be showing you how to build a time tracker in Notion from scratch so that you can easily keep track of all your work sessions. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you find this video useful as I upload new Notion tutorials every week. So here is the time tracker that I'm going to be showing you how to build today. So as you can see, this is the database where it's going to record all of your different sessions. Now this is really, really easy to use. All you need to do is click on this new session button here to start a new session. As you can see, that's added a new row to the database and right here, it's going to populate this start property with the exact date and time that you click the button. You'll then do your session and at the end of your session, you can click the end session button. So I'm going to click that. And as you can see, that's now populated the end property with today Today's date and time, obviously I've just clicked them in the same minute, which is why it's showing the exact same time. If you took a break at all, you can add in the amount of time that you took a break during that session. And this property here will calculate how many hours you work. So I'm just going to manually amend this just so that it has some actual data. So I'm just going to change the time here to 1.30 so that it shows that I've worked an hour. So as you can see, 12.30 till 1.30, it now is saying that I've worked an hour. Let's just say as an example that I took a half an hour break, I could put 0.5 as this is in hours and it's then reduced it down to 0.5 hours and at the bottom this sum here will add them all together so at the end of the day you can easily see how many hours you've worked so throughout the day you can just keep starting and adding new sessions whenever you need to and if you want to add a description here of what you did during that session you can do here so this is really great if you work with clients because you can easily keep track of all of the tasks that you've done and how much time it took you I've also set up some overview sections so that you can see your total amount of hours worked per day week or month so if we click on here as you can see there is a toggle here for each different day and it will say here how many hours in total you work so I just added some example data in here so it's not fully filled out but this is what it would look like we also have a weekly overview so you can see the same data but per week so this would show in total how many hours you worked during this week and finally we've also got a monthly overview so it will show you each month and the total hours that you worked that month so it's a really really handy system to keep track of all the time that you're working so that is the timesheet and in the rest of this video I'm going to be showing you how to build this from scratch. Okay, so we're starting with a brand new page. I've just labeled this page time tracker. I've added an icon and a cover photo as well. And the first thing that you want to ensure is that you've set your brand new page to full width. So if you don't know how to do that, you can simply just click on the three dots up here in the corner and just make sure that this full width option is toggled on. That just means there's a little bit more room on the page to work with. We're then gonna start by adding in our timesheet database. So we're gonna add a new database here. So I'm just gonna type forward slash database and select database in line. And I'm just gonna call this one on timesheet. And I'm also going to hide the title because we don't need to see it. We've already got a title here. So I'm just going to click on the three dots, hide the title. And we're also just going to delete this tags property as well because we don't need that. Okay, so the first column is the name column, but I'm actually going to change the name of that. So if you just click on here, instead of name, we're going to change it to description. Now this property is where you're going to add a description of what you did during that session. This is completely optional. If you don't want to fill out what you did for each session, that's fine. You can just leave it blank, but it is there if you want to use it. Now we need to add the date properties for our start and end time. So we're going to start by adding a new property by clicking on this plus symbol here. And I'm just going to type in date and we're going to add this date property. So this one is going to be our start time. So I'm just going to call it start. And that's all you need to do. You can leave all of these settings the same. And then we just need to add one more for the end time. So I'm going to click again on the plus symbol, type in date, select this one. And this one is going to be called end for end time. So just before we jump back into the tutorial, I just want to mention that my new second brain template is now available on my store. It's a super advanced all-in-one productivity system. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested. So that's all back to the tutorial. Next, we want to add in a number property for our break time. So if you did take a break at all during your session, then you can add in the amount of time that you took a break for. So that is a number property. So I'm going to click on here, type in number, go with this one. And we're just going to name this one break but in brackets, I'm just gonna write hours so that we know that it's in hours and you can leave the settings as they are. So I'm just gonna add a couple of example times into one of these so that we have something to work with. So let's just add in today. I'm gonna toggle the time on and let's just put an example time of 9 a.m. And let's say that I finish this session at 10 a.m. Okay, so I've just put that in so that we have some data to work with, but in a minute, we're gonna set up the buttons that will do this for you automatically. And let's say that during this session, I took a half an hour break. So I'm going to put 0.5 for half an hour. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a formula property that is going to automatically work out the time between our start time and our end time and account for any of the break time as well. So that, as I said, is using a formula property. So we're going to click on the plus symbol here. 
type in formula and this one is going to be called hours worked so it's going to work out how many hours you worked in this period and we're going to click on formula edit to bring up the panel where we can actually write in our formula now to make this work we're going to use the date between function which looks like this so it's just date between and I'm going to open a parentheses. Now what the date between function does is it simply just works out the difference between two dates and it also will work out the difference between the exact times as well. So in this case we've got 9am and 10am so it would be able to work out the time difference between them which in this case is an hour. So what we need to do with this function is tell it which two properties we want it to work out the difference between. So we're going to start with our end property, type in a comma, the other property we want to use is the start property. So this part of the formula is simply telling it to work out the time difference between the end and the start date. I'm going to add one more comma and we also need to tell it the unit. So this property can work out the difference in hours, minutes, days, weeks, years. In this case, we're going to use minutes. So I'm just going to type two commas like this and inside I'm just going to put minutes, which is the units. And I'm just going to close off the parentheses to close the function. So this isn't the finished formula, but I'm just going to click done for just a second to show you how this works. So if we have a look here, as you can see in our hours worked formula is working out 60. So I told it to work it out in minutes. So 60 is equal to an hour. And that is the time difference here between the two dates. But as I said, we also want to account for this break. So I want to minus half an hour off of this to account for the break. So let's click again on formula edit. And we're simply just going to minus and we're going to minus our break hours here. Now, the only issue with this formula is that this date between function here is working out the time in minutes, whereas this break property is working it out in hours. So I do need to convert the break hours into minutes for this to actually work properly. So it's pretty simple to do that. All we need to do is just multiply the break hours by 60 to convert it into minutes. So to multiply, you can just add the little star symbol like this. I'm going to type 60 and I'm also just going to isolate this inside parentheses. So if you've got one at the start and one at the end, just so that we're only multiplying this by 60. So if I now click done, as you can see, that is now displaying 30, which is correct because we have an hour difference here, but we're minusing half an hour, which leaves 30 minutes. But this is actually supposed to be working it out in hours. As you can see, it's supposed to be hours worked. As I think if you're looking at the total amount of time that you've worked in a day, you probably want to see it in hours rather than minutes. So let's click back on formula edit and I want to convert this back to hours. So what I'm going to do is isolate this entire thing inside parentheses. So one at the end and one right at the start. And I'm simply just going to divide the entire thing by 60 like this to convert it back to hours. So let's click done. And as you can see, that's now displaying 0.5, which is correct as it's half an hour that we've worked. Now, the only issue with this is that sometimes it will display a number with lots of decimal points. So let me just change this for a second to something random like this. And as you can see, it's working out the hours that I've worked, but we've got loads of decimal points, which is a little bit annoying. So we are just going to round this number down. So if I click again on hours worked, edit the property, formula edit, and let's just add a round function in here to round this number down. So I'm just going to type round at the start and open a parentheses. We then want to multiply this entire thing by 100. I'm just going to add that star symbol as well to multiply. Add another parentheses at the end to close this function off. And finally, we're just going to divide again by 100. Now, this is simply just going to round that number down. So if I click done, as you can see, it simply just rounded that number down to something a bit more manageable. OK, so at this point, I'm just going to delete these empty rows here and we're going to start adding in our buttons that are going to automatically add your start and end time for you. So I'm going to add them just above. So let's just make a little bit of space. So I'm going to type in forward slash button and grab this button block here. Now the first one is going to be our new session button. So we're going to label this as new session to start our session. And you can click on here to add an icon as well if you like. So I think in this case, let's go with this play button. Now down here, it's going to ask us to select what action we want to occur when the button is clicked. So you can click on add an action. So in this case, we actually want to add a page to the below database. So we're going to add a brand new entry into the database, which is why we're going to click add page two. Then it's going to ask us to select the database. So in this case, we want it to be added to this time tracker database. So if I click on here, you want to just select whatever you named it. I just called mine timesheet. So we're actually not going to edit the description property. We're going to leave that blank because that's something you can fill in afterwards if you like. So we're going to click on here, but instead we want to amend the start property. So once this button is clicked, we want the start property to be populated with the current 
day and time of today. So luckily you can select the now property. So you don't want to click today because that will just put in the date. Whereas now will it also include the time as well as the date. So we're gonna select now. And that's all we need to do. So I'm just gonna click done. And let's just show that this works. So if I click new session, as you can see, it's added a brand new row into our database and it's pulled through the exact date and time of right now. And now we need to create the end session button so that once my session is over, I can automatically get it to fill out this end property here. So just underneath here, we're gonna add in another button. So forward slash button. And this one is gonna be named end session. And I'm also going to click on here and add an icon. Let's go for this stop symbol here. So we can click add an action. And in this case, we actually want to edit pages. So I don't want to add a new page to the database like we did with the start session. We want to edit the page because we want to edit that row that we just added with the start button. So that's why we're clicking edit. Once again, you just need to select the exact database that you want to edit. So in this case, it's the same timesheet database, which is this one. Next, we need to make sure that we're only editing this brand new row that we've just added. If you leave it as all pages, it's gonna replace the end property in every single row within the table, which is definitely not what we want. So we actually need to add a filter that is gonna select this exact row here that we added just now. So you can click on all pages and it's gonna bring up this little filter option. So the filter that we're gonna add here is that the start property is today. So if you change this to is, and this to today, so start is today, and we're gonna add another rule. So you want to make sure this is and, and we also want the end property to be empty. So if I click on here, it will allow me to say is empty. So that is the filter that we're gonna add. We want the start property to be today, and we want the end property to be empty. So that's essentially just allowing us to only edit this exact row here that we've just added where the end property is empty. We're then gonna click on edit a property, and we want to edit our end property. And similar to before, we just want it to be set to now. So whenever I click that button, I want the exact date and time to be populated in the box. So that's why we're selecting this. And that's all we need to do. So I'm just gonna click done. So now once I click the button, as you can see, it's populating this box here with the exact date and time of today. And as you can see, I've worked three minutes on setting up this button. And if you remember, you can add in your description in here. So I set up the end session button. But as I said, it's completely optional. You might not want to fill this in every single time. So now we're gonna set up a couple of different views. So this database, I want to show just my timesheet for today. So let's change the name here of our tab. So click rename. I'm just gonna call this one today. And we can also change the icon here. I'm just gonna pick a calendar like this. So as this should only show data for today, I'm gonna add a filter so that we only see sessions for today. So we can click on filter and let's filter by the start time. And I'm just gonna change this to this day, which essentially just means today. And that will filter out anything from the previous day. I also want to add a sort as well, because I think it would be useful to see your most recent session at the top of the list. So if we click on sort, again, we're gonna go with sort by the start, and we want this to be actually start is descending, so that the most recent session shows at the top of the list. And next, we're gonna start working on the analytics tab that show you an overview of your day, your week, your month, and all the hours that you've worked. So we're gonna start by duplicating this tab. So I'm just gonna click on here and select duplicate. And we're gonna change the name here to daily overview. And I'm also just gonna pick a different icon. So I'm actually just gonna pick this chart icon here. So the first thing I want to do is just delete that filter. So I don't want to filter based on today. So I'm actually just gonna click on here, select this three dots and delete this filter, but we can leave the sort as it is. So I'm just gonna add a couple more entries for previous days, just so that we have a bit more data to work with. Okay, so now that we have a little bit more data, we now want to group these based on the day. So to do that, you can click on the three dots here, select group. And in this case, we're gonna group based on the start property. So that's now added the group, but I actually just want to change how it displays. So as you can see, it shows last seven days yesterday, but that's not really how I want it to display. So we want to click on date by, and you actually want to select day. That just means that it's gonna group it based on the day. So we've now got a separate toggle here for each day that we have data for. And I also just want to change the sort here. So it's set to oldest first, but I actually think it would be more useful to see it based on the newest or most recent date first. So we're gonna just change it that to newest first. And that's all we need to do. So as you can see, here are all of our different toggles. I'm just gonna close these so it's just easier to see them. Now this number here that displays next to the toggle, I actually want it to show how many hours have been worked. So currently it's just counting how many entries there are, but I actually want it to show the hours work. So if you click on here, you can actually set it to sum and we want it to sum the hours worked. 
and that's then going to add these together so that's now how it would look and that just reminds me one other thing that I wanted to do on this today tab was also just calculate the sum of the hours here as well so if you just hover at the bottom you can click on calculate and select sum so that it will add your total hours so you can look at this throughout the day to see how many hours you've worked let's just go back over to the daily overview tab so now I just want to set up a really similar tab, but for the weekly and monthly view. So we're simply just going to click on here and duplicate this one. And the next one is going to be the weekly overview. So I'm just going to change the name. And there's only a couple of things we need to change here. So I'm actually just going to click on the group settings here. And we actually just want to change the date by from day to week so that it's now grouping them based on the week instead of the day. And you can have these toggles open or close. It's up to you. I'm just going to close them because it looks a little bit cleaner. And finally, let's set up our monthly view. So I'm going to click on here, duplicate, and let's name this one monthly view. And once again, I'm just going to click on group and we're going to change the date by to group them based on the month. And currently we've only got data for February, so there's just one month showing here, but normally it would obviously show all of the previous months. So that is the functionality of the timesheet all finished. The only thing I want to do now is just make this look a little bit nicer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add two columns so that we can see the buttons at the side of the database. So just at the bottom, I'm gonna type in forward slash to C like this, and that's gonna bring up this two columns block. So I'm gonna select that. Now I'm gonna start by just grabbing the two buttons. So if you just highlight them, you can actually grab both of them at the same time. And then if I click on the six dots here, I'm just gonna drag them and let's place them here in the first column. Next, we're gonna grab the database. So again, just dragging on these six dots, you can drag it and drop it into the second column. Now we can change the size of the column. So if you just hover in the middle here, you'll see this gray bar. So I can actually just pull it to make that a little bit smaller so that we can actually see the entire database. And let's just make some of these a little bit smaller because they don't need as much room. And finally, I just want to create kind of like a little menu thing for our button. So I'm actually going to use a call out block to do that. So just underneath, I'm going to type forward slash call out and select this one. And we're going to call this one commands and a colon. And I'm also just going to highlight this and make it bold. And you can actually just grab the two buttons. So again, just highlighting them and grabbing them. I'm going to place them inside the call out block just here underneath commands. I also just want to add in a little divider between the word commands and the button. So if you just hit enter and type in three dashes in a row, it's going to add in a divider and I'll just delete that space. Finally, I'm going to change the icon. So I think I'm going to use Notion's icon library. So if you select icons and I think we're going to go with this cursor button icon here. And finally, I am just going to change the background color so you can keep it as gray if you like that look, but I'm actually going to click on here, select color, and we're going to go with the default background. So therefore it's white with this little gray outline. And I think that looks really great. So that is the time tracker all set up. So all you need to do is every time you want to clock in a new session, you can click new session. It's going to add a new row into the database. Then once your session is complete, you can click end session and it will clock you out and it will then work out how many hours you've worked. And that's it. You can check out all of my pre-made Notion templates over on my store, including this super advanced second brain template, which is an all-in-one productivity system. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And if you did find this video helpful, then I would really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I post new Notion tutorials like this one every week.